I have a basic version of the leads application working now. Um, we're showing some leads here. We're showing a contacted column, which is whether um, whether or not the current user has contacted the owner of this lead. And um, this is actually a left join from the uh, messages table. So what I'm going to talk about in this lesson is using Eloquent and some things you can do with that. And other than that, I'm open to suggestions about, um, you know, things you guys want to know about Laravel. So basically, most of the data you're seeing now here is all from the FCL table. Um, we've selected a few different columns to show here. Um, but this contacted here is actually from the messages table. And what I need to do is I need to do a left join um, for this in order to show yes or no whether it's been contacted. We wouldn't want to do an inner join because an inner join, inner join would only show these um, rows if it had a message on the uh, messages table but we want to show um, these leads no matter what whether whether or not someone has contacted them and whether or not there's a message that's associated with that so um, if I just go over to our lead controller here you'll see that um, just as before we're selecting the fields but now we're using this left join so you can see arrow left join this is from um, Laravel's query builder and you can use all of the things from Query Builder, um, you know, when you use Eloquent. And we are left joining the messages table. And then the second parameter here is a closure. And the reason why we need to do, use a closure here is because we have sort of multiple requirements that we need to specify. We need to um, we need to left join on messages.leadid is equal to um, fcl.id but we have another specification which is where the sender ID is equal to auth user ID which is the current user so we want to what we want to show um, on this page is whether the current user that's logged in I'm currently logged into the application whether the user that's currently logged in has um, sent a message to this user or not and you can see one of them here is yes and you'll see if they click yes here we get this um, we get this pop-up box which tells them you've already contacted this user but if it says no there and they click on this one they will get this modal popping up and they can send um, a message to them we can actually just go through this once if you click here and I've um, just let them start off with a little bit of um, information to to start off their message and if we click send message here um, we get this alert right here um, success your message was sent successfully and now you see the contact has changed to yes and we can close this box um, just by clicking the X right there so let's just look at some of the query builder stuff um, in order to do this um, we are selecting the fields you want um, I did make a few changes to this one if we go over to um, the get requires field you'll see I actually changed things up a little bit here um, the first thing I'm doing is, you know, of course we pass this section. In our case, we're FCL, so we go into this, um, we go into this case block right here, and um, the result I'm setting to an array. And just to be explicit, I'm prepending each one of these fields um, with a section name. So this is going to be FCL.container, FCL.commodityGroup, um, because once we start doing joins, um, we're going to get, you know the ID field for multiple tables and we the results can become ambiguous and we can get SQL errors because we're not being explicit about you know which ID or um, you know which column is coming from what table so I'm just being explicit here FCL got dot container etc and we build up that result array and at the bottom here um, what, what I do is I push a few things onto this array that I know are going to be a common no matter whether it's FCL, LCL, no matter what section, I'm going to need the lead ID, I'm going to need the lead user ID, and I'm also going to want to select messages.id as message underscore ID. This is necessary because we cannot, we cannot join another table and select ID from both tables. We're going to get an error, we're going to get an SQL error because um, once we display the results, it's not going to know ID is referring to which table. So we need to alias messages.id as message underscore ID. 
and then I also want messages.leadid. And then I return this array of column names and we and we pass that into our um, select method right here. The next thing I want to do is left join the messages table. As I mentioned before, um, we want to join this table um, whether or not um, whether or not each of the leads has a message. We want to show all the leads, um, you know, whether or not there's a message associated with it. Um, I have I have a number of conditions here. I want to select it on the lead ID is equal to the model ID, and I also want um, that to only happen where the sender ID is equal to the logged in user. So in order to do that, um, the second parameter of left join needs to be a closure, and that is just done with function join. If you need to bring in some external data into your PHP closure, you need to use this use part right here. So use model. If I didn't need model, I could just um, delete this part and it would just be like that. But I need to bring in the uh, model name, so we just use use model right there. And then everything's fine for the left join. I'm taking 10 results and then finally finishing it out, finishing up, finishing it off with get, and that is going to return um, a collection of results. I think that's all that's interesting in the controller, so we can go over to the view now. And um, a couple things have changed here. Um, if a message was sent to the message controller, so if somebody sent a message, what we're going to do is I'm storing that in the messages table with message colon colon create. And um, if that stored successfully, this will um, this will actually return the um, the entire row as an object. It will return um, the message model that we just stored. So this will evaluate to true, and then we'll just redirect them back to the lead page that they were on. But we are going to do it with a flash flash message here. So re return redirect back with um, some flash data, and here I'm just passing back. Um, the message, your message was sent successfully, and also the type for success, and that's going to be used um, inside the class uh, for the um, for the success alert. If I go back to the view here, um, you'll see if session has message um, include partials dot alert. I'll just open up this alert view really quickly, and you'll see all that's happening here is um, you know we're displaying the alert. You can grab things from the session in Laravel with session get, and then we get the type right there. And I also want to get the message, session get message. But we only want to do this if there's something, um, if there's something within the the session flash. And the way you check for that is what I have right here. If session has message, then we're going to show those um, those flash variables. Going down to the bottom here, I'm just going to select this row. Because we did a left join on the messages table, we remember we selected messages.id as message underscore id. Um, so this is now accessible um, within the lead object as lead arrow and then message id. And when we do a left join here, if it did find something, then this is going to it's going to evaluate to a number. It's going to be whatever is the ID of the message and if we have something there then inside this ternary statement this is going to um, this is going to evaluate to true because it has a number there and then we're going to return yes but if we weren't able to find anything on the join then this is going to be null and then we are going to return a no right there so that's how we get um, in the contacted column here you'll get yes or no uh, on whether or not the user has sent a message already Let's just go back to um, the FCL page here and uh, we'll click on one of the yes ones. You'll see I got this really sweet alert right here. Um, it lasts for two seconds. And this was taken straight from um, the Twitter bootstrap theme. Um, if you want to know where that is, it's at rapbootstrap.com. So if we scroll down here, I'm using this first one here, Smart Admin, and I've been really happy with this so far. If you guys are curious on how I was um, able to take this out of the theme and then get it working in the site, um, I can just walk you through basically the process that um, that I that I went through to do that. Um, basically, I have the the template um, on my local computer here as well. 
So I was actually just browsing through um, all of the different elements here and then I found that one right here, this extra small alert, okay? So how did I go about like actually implementing this? Um, I just start out by inspecting it, so I just right click on it and I click um, inspect element and you'll see right here I have this this button and um, actually I, I don't want the button there because I already have um, my own thing so I'm not interested in the button because I already have the the mail icon there so um, I'm not interested in the button what I'm interested in is the the JavaScript that's going on basically um, you know what it, what's being triggered when somebody clicks on this what's being triggered and then when I see this ID equals um, eg7 right here I know that this is probably being used as a hook in the JavaScript so what I'll do is I'll just right click and I'll view the source and then I'll control set for uh, sorry control F for eg7 and then you'll see we get two results here the first one is the button I'm not interested in that um, but if I go to the next one I see this um, eg7 it has a click event listener to it and what happens when someone clicks on this um, this this function is running right here this small box um, function is being run so basically what I did was I just copied all of that and I created a main.js file and I changed that you know clicking on the the button or whatever they had to just when somebody clicks on one of my elements that has a class of contacted so you can do that in jQuery with dot contacted when somebody clicks on an element with that class then basically what I'm doing is I'm just showing this small box um, the same thing they had I lowered the timeout to two seconds and I changed the contact a little bit I said thanks for using um, freight forum the name of my um, application just to keep this dynamic I just set an array of all of the different domains that could be developed here and this is basically a hash and the the keys are the um, the domain names and then I have the the site name um, as the value and then the next thing I just need to do is basically check the status of message ID to see if a message was sent or not and if this was a truthy value then I know that a message was sent and then I'm just showing this um, this i tag right here and giving a class of contacted and that is going to trigger that alert and tell them that they've already contacted the user but if this is uh, if this value is to false then I want to show the usual Twitter bootstrap modal um, we have the data target data toggle etc and then this is going to launch the um, the message modal the last thing that I want to talk about is something we need to keep um, dynamic about these modals you'll see uh, some of these will say Dear Eddie and other ones will have my name I'm not sure yeah there's one with my name so we need these to be um, dynamic e each one of these envelopes when you click on it it should show a different modal in a different form because we're sending to messages to all different kinds of users and the way that I did that was um, basically you need to put um, the modal code within the for loop so you'll see this for each lead says lead you need to keep that you need to include that modal within the for loop and that is going to output a different modal for every one of the leads and then I'm passing I actually put that modal inside its own partial to keep things clean and we're passing it the lead because we're going to need some information from this so we can open up that partial right here and you'll see everything right here basically we have the usual um, Twitter bootstrap modal and I've wrapped it in a form because when somebody fills this out obviously I want to send a, a form and I'm sending that to the messages controller if you need to use some um, hidden inputs using Laravel you can use form colon colon hidden and you're basically putting the name of the um, hidden input right there and the value is the second parameter um, using this form open will also output a um, token element for you and you can use that to optionally um, have CSRF protection for your uh, for your forms and really the important thing about the Twitter um, bootstrap modals is um, the tricky part is um, when you're outputting it here in the data target 
you need this data target to be dynamic. So you'll see I have um, pound sign model lead uh, dash lead ID. Okay, so every one of the leads is going to have a different lead ID. So that means these are all going to point to different modals now. And the data target, obviously the pound sign here is referring to, um, it's going to look for another element with the ID of modal lead and whatever is the lead ID. So I need to pass in that lead object um, to the modal. And this is how things are kept dynamic is by this is basically the main reason why I selected the lead ID and um, we're not showing that within the site anywhere here but I do need it um, basically to, to identify um, the different leads and I need it within my modal so if I go over to the top of um, the lead modal here you'll see the ID field right here and that's the same modal lead and then lead ID the last thing that I want to talk about um, before I finish this video is something really cool that you can do with Eloquent which is um, establishing relationships between the different models you'll see here um, I passed through the lead model so you might think you know me passing through the lead there is just going to return the FCL table but it not only um, includes this table it also includes um, every other table that has a relationship with this table and you can establish those relationships um, within the model so um, you'll see my FCL model right here FCL extends eloquent um, I've actually I've added on a function right here public function user and I say this belongs to user and you can find more information about this in Laravel's documentation but basically what this is saying is um, that whole FCL table it belongs to a user so basically what that allows us to do is anytime we are using that lead object um, because I has established that um, that user function um, so each lead is owned by um, owned by the user table we can do this lead arrow user and then first name and what this is doing is it's grabbing the first name um, from the users table so that means when you're using eloquent and you're selecting a model such as here where you this is selecting from the FCL table you're not only getting um, the things from the FCL, ta FCL table you're also getting all of the different tables um, that that you that have, have established relationships with this one and you can set up all of those relationships um, inside inside your model so like I said um, user this belongs to user and also this FCL table it also owns some things so each row in the um, in the FCL table which is basically an FCL model um, that can have many messages so there could be many messages associated with that and if I go over to the user table we can you can establish the inverse of the relationship um, so for example every user uh, could have many rows in the FCL table and we do that with has many. It could have um, each user could have many LCL leads, and we we establish that with um, has many.